So let's kick this thing off. So first thing we're going to be talking about uh, today is you're not getting much contact from coaches, question mark. What, what can you be doing to get your name out there? So I'm sure some of you watching are probably seniors or even juniors. Uh, and you're wondering, well, I see these offers on Twitter. Why are some guys getting scholarship offers and I'm not? There's a couple of reasons for that, of course. It could be maybe there's a mismatch with your level for college. Maybe you're not quite at that level yet. Or a lot a lot times more, it could be you might not have the right video. So the first thing we're going to talk about, some of you have heard, but we're going to talk about some new aspects of video. So when, you, when a college coach gets an email from you guys or Twitter DM or hears from from you from your high school coach the first thing they typically want to know is okay does he have the grades to get into my school is he a good person what type of a person is he and that's usually after of course they look at your film to make sure that you're you know the right fit for that program so first thing they want to know is okay let me take a look at a senior film let me take a look at his junior film if he's a senior if you pass that checkpoint the next thing would be is what's his grades does he get into our school if it's a higher caliber school. Now, if it's like a Princeton or Harvard or Yale, Ivy League school or UPenn or Stanford, a really hard school to get into, the first thing they're going to ask is what are your grades? So you got to make sure when you're emailing schools, applying to schools, that there's a, a not a mismatch, right? So if you send a school like Stanford a message and you have a 22 ACT, they're probably not going to write back and they're probably not going to even bother looking at your video, right? So you got to get the right fit first. All right. So, well, coach, uh, my huddle video stinks. I don't have hardly any videos or the ball is lost in the view or they, you can't really see much in there. So what do we do if you have sort of a crappy huddle video or a season video where if this is our screen here, right, the ball goes up, it's gone, and then all of a sudden the ball lands and you had no idea that you had a touchback. So what you could do is you first off do it the right way. So kickingworld.com slash recruiting. We talk about uh, tips on making a football kicking highlight video. So make sure that you know that link it's kickingworld.com slash recruiting. Okay. And there's tips for making a football kicking highlight video, I think is the exact link uh and uh after you do that right going forward this year the next thing that you would want to do is supplement your season video if you only had like five field goals or 10 pats or not enough punts supplement that video with a practice film okay now here's the trick that we're going to talk about today a lot of students when they do these practice films they just go out on a hurricane day it's super windy optimal conditions the wind is at their back you see their shirt blowing their shorts blowing and the flag the uh the upright is 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 almost falling over you don't want to kick on a day like that any coach that knows anything is going to look for things like that and they don't want to see 20 mile an hour gusts so be truthful go out on a neutral day try to not oversell your capabilities okay be honest with the coaches. Okay, I typically kick it X distance and X yards, or, or I'm sorry, um, X hang time, right? So if you typically kick it to the goal line every time on a kickoff, but sometimes it goes five deep and sometimes it goes only to the three yard line, what I would probably say is I routinely kick it 60 yards to the goal line, right? You wouldn't say I usually kick it 65 if that only happens one out of five. That wouldn't be right to the coach. You would be misleading them and not properly representing your ability, okay? So keep that in mind when you email schools. Um, now, one video that you want to do if you don't have enough footage or like I have a couple seniors right now. I had a, a couple seniors in the past over the years that – they're getting close to getting offered a scholarship. And usually what, what the coach wants to see is a consecutive video. And what a consecutive video basically means is you record nonstop. So all your kicking, all your punting, uh, you know, if it's just punting, you just do your punts. If your kickoffs and field goals, just do those two, whatever. But you don't stop and then re-kick five times till you get your perfect one and then stop. You just keep the tape running. So how I would do that is if I was out on the field, I would come out here, I would set up, you know, 30 left, 30 right, 35 left, 35 right, 40 middle, 45 middle, and just set up different spots 
try to get, you know, seven or eight balls. Have your dad, a, a brother, a friend, whoever, your sister, uh, someone shag, keep the flow going. So you kick seven or five or however many balls, three. Then you do another set of three, five or seven. And then you do it till you have about 10 to 15 consecutive kicks. Okay. Now, when you do this, use iMovie uh, for Apple or your cell phone uh, for your IO, iOS device or Movie Maker if you know how to use like Final Cut Pro or any real video editing software. It's very simple. All you do is you put like a stop, a vertical line. You could um, split the clip, uh, but don't cut it. Uh, and then you could change the speed of that split. So you basically you're like in fast motion in between each kick. And then the coach doesn't have to sit through to watch a, f a 15 minute video. Uh, you could have 15 kicks in a matter of uh, a minute and a half. And that's a really good way to do it. So what it does is it shows that you're not trying to doctor up the video and it makes it more expeditious to watch. So it's a very efficient way for coaches to see, okay, he's not trying to just go out on a bomber wind day um, and, you know, get his best kicks. Okay. So you can get some of those monster kicks because they're impressive. Like on highlight videos, you can make a couple of variants. You could do your best clips of your in season. Always start with your best, your second best, your third best. Never go to uh, chronologically. Don't just start from the first game to the last game unless they're best to least best. Always go in order of your wow kicks to your you know second wow, but don't put any of the lackluster kicks on there. You could do a separate video, but use that just for your own growth or just for your memories. But for recruiting purposes, typically two, three minutes max, best of your best season videos. That's it. Okay. Always start with your best skill. So are you more of a kickoff guy, more of a punter, more of a field goal? Always start with whatever you feel like is in your wheelhouse. So if you hit monster 60 yard punts from where you hit it, which would be like a 45 yard net with a snap, four, five, four, six, four, seven hang times, but your kickoffs or only three, four, three, five hang times, 60 yards. I would probably do a punting only video and then maybe do a separate kicking video and then do another video of punting kickoffs. But just post your punting video on your social media sites, on Huddle, on YouTube, and then have the other one in the reserves just in case the school's looking for a combo guy. But what I probably wouldn't do is go put out both if you feel like it's not a real representation of your full ability. So meaning if you're lights out division one punter, but you're like, eh, decent on field goals or kickoffs. Probably just really sell the punting aspect, but mention that you could also do kicking too. All right. Um, so we talked about, you know, things that could discount, discount your work or make it less impressive. Having hurricane wind, seeing your shorts and your shirt blow on the wind, right? The flag post going, uh, extreme weather, uh, really hot day and you got like a nice gust behind you the ball is going to go further if you have a bomber ball uh, some of our competitor camps um, not going to call it the names but they use balls that are like four or five years old and it's not a good way to do it it doesn't really represent an in-game environment so at most of our camps and definitely all of our showcases we have brand new balls and most of the regular instructional camps are only a few weeks old so it's really important to use balls that are going to simulate a game environment so if you film a video of a, a football that's been worked to death and it's like it's going to go five or six yards further so make sure you pump your balls up to the right uh, pounds per square inch at our camps, we typically do 12, 12 and a half PSI at our showcase events. At our regular camps, we like to do 11 and a half to 12. Uh, for a beginner kicker, intermediate kicker, it's really hard to compress a ball at 13 or even 12 and a half uh, PSI. So I would err more on slightly less inflated for a rookie. So if you're like an eighth grader, ninth grader, or even a middle school or youth kicker, and you're using rubber composite balls, that helps you to compress the ball. But if you step up to leather balls and you're having a really uh, hard time of migrating to the le leather ball, one thing that you could do is take a little air out so you get a little bit of a compression. So when that ball goes, it gets a little more bounce versus that ball stays hard. It's really hard to get pop on the ball. Okay. But when you go into junior and senior, you keep it at 12, 12 and a half, because um, that's what you're going to be using typically in a game. 
depends on the quarterback's hand, of course, too. But all right. Uh, so again, with your consecutive video, before we go on to the next point, make sure you have at least 10 kicks, 15, 20 would be better. Uh, if you're a punter or a kickoff, I would probably do five left, five right, five middle. Uh, maybe add in a couple rollout punts, rugby punts. We talk about how to do that in our punting DVD, a step-by-step guide to punting. All right, so a couple other things uh, with video before we go on to other more uh, different recruiting uh, topics. In 2018, we're here January, excuse me, January 18. I used to say, make sure it's HD. Three years from now, who knows what it's going to be. Maybe it's 3D, maybe it's virtual reality. Technology changes every day. It's, it's really amazing. Uh, but I would say right now, not even 720. I would say you got to really have 1080 would be ideal. Some cameras, 720 is, is, is awesome, like a really professional Canon or Sony DSLR or video camera that's like two grand. But if you get a consumer level camera, which is totally fine, uh, get like a $200 or $300 camera at Best Buy, but set it to 1080 or even 4K nowadays. Uh, another thing, um, most of these phones nowadays, like the Samsung Galaxy S, S series, the 7, the 8, the 9, they take unbelievable video and photos i still think they're way better than an iphone but the new iphone x uh, i i don't really think the photos are that great but the video is amazing really good video you could do 4k or even 1080 is fine um or 2.7k which is like basically a little over half of 4k but um the iphone x i would do uh, i don't think it takes i think it takes way better video than an iphone 7 uh or any of the sixes and fives but i would say if you have a galaxy series they probably take the best video and photos so keep that in mind if you're not using a pro camera but if you use a, a regular cell phone camera what a trick that you could do for audio to try to make it less windy do a bluetooth like i'm doing today and just mute yourself or you just mute the video uh, but it's good to have some wind uh, to hear some sounds, but you don't want it to be like uh, all muffled, like hearing all sorts of stuff. It's just unprofessional. So uh, an even better thing is you get a, a off of Amazon, they're like 20 or 25 bucks. Uh, it's like a, a feather tip that you put into your camera and then or to your phone rather. And then it, it sort of muffles a lot of the outside noise but it'll hear within like five yards around you so you'll hear the foot to ball contact which is important when a coach evaluates you but you won't hear like outside no outside noise if you're at like a field where there's kids playing on a playground or whatever so that should help you with your videos uh but make sure it's at least 1080 nowadays or a really strong 720 but even better 4k because i've been seeing on youtube now they're actually sort of rewarding videos with 4k you'll get more views too all right, um, one last point about video, and then we're going to talk about game day visits. Uh, make sure when you do your video, uh, reference the tips for football kicking videos or how to make a football kicking video on kickingworld.com slash recruiting. We have a very thorough article about how to do it, talking about keeping the ball in frame, talking about uh, make sure that you're uh, not putting the circles around some of these huddle videos. They got like a Gatorade symbol or like a circle and it stops mid you're kicking. And then all of a sudden it's like, there's like a circle on you and then you start kicking again. And it just doesn't make sense. Cause coaches like to see the timing of, okay, the ball is snapped. When does he hit the ball? What's his get off time? He catches the ball on a punt and then it freezes with your Gatorade symbol. And then you punt again and they can't really get the data that they need. Okay. How many seconds does it take him to get the putt off? Okay, well, if he came to D1 school after a 2A school, smaller school in Texas, is he going to be able to get the ball off against a six foot five guy, right? So these are things you got to think, what is the coach thinking about when he looks at my video? All right, juniors and seniors, ask for game day visits. Best time to do it, early fall when the season's going just kicking off, maybe late summer, um, probably the last week of August, first or second week of September. Part of the reason is the hype. A lot of coaches like to get a lot of recruits in early. Even if there's just modest interest in you, they want to get people out to campus. It sort of shows, okay, there's a lot of people interested in our school, especially if there's a new coach change that, that uh, off season. I would be emailing a lot of schools where there's coach changes and say, hey, coach, um, I think I got what it takes. Here's my video. I was wondering if we could set up a, a game day visit this fall. Let me know what you think. Thanks for your time. So as simple as that, Twitter, Twitter DM, although nowadays I, I, I would, 
I used to say Twitter DMs, but the problem is everyone is is badgering our uh, the college coaches and they're getting annoyed with it. So I would say only Twitter DM if you really feel it's a true fit. So same thing for email. Don't go just email every school and, and waste their time, right? It's going to waste your time to sending that email. You have to have the right fit. So if you're kicking at 55 yards on a kickoff, three, three seconds hang time, you shouldn't be even close to email in a D2 or D1 school or even a D3 for that matter. But if you're hitting 4-0 kickoff, 3-8, 3-9, 4-0, 3-8, 3-9 consistently, you should be absolutely emailing D1s as long as you're kicking at 63, 65, 66 yards. But if it's a 3-9 hang with a 55 yard every time, that's probably not D1. That would be a D2 level kicker because you have a D1 hang, but not the distance for D1 yet. Okay. So asking for game day visits, you might see kids with lanyards on in the fall, September, October uh, for a game. What is that all about? A lot of times your high school coach can help set that up. Uh, if you work with me daily here in Austin or one of our kicking world coaches around the country, we can help set that up. We know a lot of coaches we're friendly with. We'd be happy to send an email out on your behalf. But most of the time it starts with you. So you should send out a simple email like, hey, coach, I'm a junior right now. I've attached my um my sophomore year highlight video below and a practice workout from the season uh, going into my junior year. I've been really looking at your school or XYZ school. It has the major I plan to go into, you know, business, pharmacy, market, whatever, uh, scientists, whatever you're trying to go, law, uh, you know, social studies, whatever you want to do. But find something that there's like a, a commonality between what your email says and what the school has to offer. So like, don't just say, okay, hey, my name is... This is a very generic email. Thank you so much for your time. They get emails like that all the time. Make it like, okay, my dad or my mom went to that school or you have my major. Uh, I have the right GPA. I got a 30 uh, ACT and you know I want to go to Stanford, whatever it is, right? Don't overshoot, but also have some lofty goals, but make sure there's a reality in check too. You can't just say, okay, well, I just started kicking this year and I could kick a 40 yard field goal and I could kick my kickoff to the 10 yard line. I'm going to go email USC, Texas, um, Stanford, Michigan, Rutgers, Penn state and Florida state this weekend. That's, that's not right to do. So keep your aspirations in check, but I'm not saying to down your dreams, but make sure there's reality too. Okay. Understand the NCA recruiting timeline. It varies by level. So F, uh, D3, uh, D2, FCS, a.k.a. Uh, D1AA, FBS, a.k.a. Division I, um, they all have their own rules. Last week when I was at the convention speaking to coaches, that was actually a dead period. They could not contact uh, kids, players, recruits, any level. So when I came back from the convention, it was crazy. On Tuesday when I came back, three of our four of our kids got offered that day why because that whole week they're scouring around checking out stuff like we sent our hot prospect list xyz camp probably sent their you know best available lists abc camp sent his list whatever so there's like you know four or five main big camps out there sending our list and there's other camps out there other than four or five but there's like four or five major ones in our space right now and when we send out our list out there you know, the coaches take a look. Okay, let's look at his film. Does his video uh, look consistent? Is he trying to inflate it? Okay, his grades look good. Okay, what is, is there any referrals in here? Okay, his head coach said this about him. Okay, I know this coach. I've, I played with him in college or okay, I went to school with him or yeah, he's, he's had some recruits funnel into our program over the years. Let me pick up the phone and give him a call. But oh, I got to wait till the dead period's over, right? So that Monday and Tuesday was really busy and then stuff got done quickly. It's like making deals, right? So they're, okay, we like you, but you know, are you interested in our school? Oh no, I'm sorry, coach. I think I like this school better. I'm probably going there, whatever. So there's, you got to put the right people together. It's like putting a team together or a business together, college football programs, their number one job other than winning games is recruiting. So if they don't have a good recruiting class, you're probably not going to have the right talent. So just keep in mind, uh, and this applies to business and life when you're looking for a job or an interview or starting your own business, whatever, you got to find the right skill match, the right personality match, and the right um, values match and culture fit. Uh, Coach Swinney at da uh, Dabo Swinney for Clemson and Coach um, uh, Coach for Alabama, Nick Saban, they talk about culture, they talk about um, 
the right fit in their program, right? They're probably the two most successful coaches right now. The, the Georgia coach is a big one too, is finding the right culture fit. So make sure the talent fit is there when you're contacting coaches, okay? Um, early offers prior to your junior year are ex extremely rare at any level. So Division two, Division one, uh, and any position but specifically for a kicker or a punter. Okay, sometimes snappers get offered a little earlier than a kicker or a punter because they fill out, they you know they know what size they're going to be. They're, they're pretty much at their, at their growth spurt already. But what I found over the years, kickers and punters, there's a couple reasons why they don't get offered uh, early. They typically get offered after the senior year is over of a, a high school football player. So literally that first month or two, December, January is big for seniors. Now, yes, you will sometimes see juniors get offered during their junior year of football season. That's not common. It might happen maybe under 10 times across all of college football, 10 early offers. But then your senior year, you probably have maybe maybe 30 scholarships in a season. It depends. It really depends on the crop. If, you know, if a team has a senior right now in division one, they're probably looking for an incoming freshman. There's usually like a year of overlap. So they, they want typically a division one school, like a Penn state, a, a Rutgers, a Michigan, a Florida state, a USC, a Cal Berkeley, a Texas, a Baylor, you know, any of these big schools I'm throwing out FBS, they want, a senior kicker or punter, and then they want to have another guy come study in under his wing um, as a freshman. So that would, be, would mean a high school senior should be looking for schools if he's playing at the Division One level or wants to play at the Division One level. You should be seeking out schools that have a senior while you're uh, – while you're going to be a freshman or a junior while you're a senior in high school. Okay. So that when you go in role in the fall, that, that guy that was a junior last year at your college is now going to be a senior and you'll be a freshman. So there's going to be an overlap and they'll typically redshirt you unless you earn the job, then they'll pull your red shirt off. You know, it's a term means basically that you don't use a year of eligibility. Now, if you do redshirt and you don't play at all, sometimes if you play even just a game, they could still preserve your redshirt, but then you would typically come in that next year and play. Okay. So um, typically kickers and punters don't get offered till their senior year. A couple of reasons. One, stupid, but a lot of teams are, you know, it's not stupid to have two or three depths on a running back or quarterback, of course, but it's stupid that they don't put enough priority on kickers and punters. They sort of wait till the end. And you look what happened with Alabama in the playoffs this year, you know, not to say that he's a bad kicker or whatever he did really well, but he had some ups and downs. Partly that could be maybe they didn't spend enough time on the field goal operation. Partly it could be nerves with the kicker. It could be whatever, but and that's across across the nation. You see it with the NFL, you know, Blair Walsh had some trouble. Some other NFL kickers had troubles over the years. It happens. But the point is if more college football teams invested more time on their kicking game, whether it was having a coach that actually knows about kicking or trusting us, more of the kicking coaches out there like me and other coaches that know what we're doing or just prioritizing. Okay. We need a kicker this year. We're not going to wait till senior year we're going to get someone early find the best guy right but another reason why they don't get picked up early for kickers and punters i feel typically the kicker and punter it's like having a litter of puppies it's a weird analogy but you got the runt and then you got the you know the thoroughbred or a horse right typically the bigger bigger dudes the big ogres the the linemen the running backs the four fours the four three guys that are lightning fast, the D-backs, the quarterbacks, they get picked up early because they're hitting their growth spurt early. For whatever reason, guys like that, they grow early. Uh, kickers, not all the time. You know, some kickers come to our camps with full-on beards that look like they're in their 20s, but most of them, you know, they're, they're just going through puberty. So I found even with myself, when I played um, my senior year of high school, I barely was just going through puberty. I don't even think I had like peach fuzz on my uh, legs. It was very light hair. Then my freshman and sophomore year of college, I put on like 15 pounds and I grew two inches. I went from about five, nine and a half to now I'm five eleven in my fresh freshman and sophomore year of college. It was crazy. So I actually grew 
when I was like 19, 19 and a half, 18, uh, weight and height. So it happens. So I think those are the reasons that most kids don't get picked up until later on, um, in high school. All right. So we're going to talk now about, um, for seniors right now, because this is the focus for this talk. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit just general. So seniors, um, if a coach starts asking you your senior year to send out like a, um, a video of a consecutive kick or pump, like we were talking about earlier, and it's like December, January, February. Now we had, this was the inaugural year of this early signing <clears throat> in December. This is the first time ever. If you're watching this video later, if we post it, next year if it's still available or in the future maybe this will be a standard going forward but in 2017 december it was the first year that they had a december signing period and we saw only a few kickers and punters get signed early most are still just verbal commits and then our regular signing period that it's been over the years for since the inception inception of college football i believe is usually the second week i believe of february it's on a wednesday first or second week i just forgot off the top of my head but it's a wednesday typically and that's when the students they fax in their national letter of intent uh, you'll see hashtags on twitter like nli uh, signing day official signing day stuff like that and that basically means up until that point, it was a verbal commitment. Now it's actually a written commitment. They're saying, okay, I'm sending in my official fax. Now I'm locked into that school. Unless something crazy happens, they're going there, right? Now the school and the, the student could part ways at that point later on, but typically it means that's where they're locked in. And then the schools, any other schools that we're looking at, you will pull their offer and then they'll go look at for their backup guy on their recruiting board. So coaches, they'll have like a, literally like if you watch the NFL films, um, those those cool series on Amazon and HBO they have like a, a board <clears throat> okay here's our top running back here's the guy that if that guy goes down <clears throat> here's a guy that came to our camp last year he made our training camp but he's on the practice squad he's three on our depth chart and then here's another guy fourth on the depth chart that we would get in an acquisition if someone got hurt or someone got traded now it's similar with college uh, they have okay here's our 2018 guys we offered this guy we're still waiting to hear back from him this guy, we said we want to come in as a preferred walk-on or a walk-on. And then these two guys are sort of like our contingent plans if these two kickers and punters don't work out, right? So what I was getting at for seniors, if they start asking you, hey, send us a video of like 15 or 20 unedited clips. Send it to me as soon as you can. Probably means there's something happening. Maybe they offered and they're looking for a backup plan or they don't have an offer on the table and they know now they need a kicker and you're in the mix. So Get back to coaches responsibly. Uh, one thing that drives me crazy as a business owner, as a coach, just in general with life, whether it could be dating, it could be relationships, friends, is if people don't follow through on things, right? So whether it's I'm asking a recruit for something or a college coach asks you to do something or you tell someone you're going to be somewhere at X time and you don't show up or you show up 20 minutes late, those things are no goes in my book, right? It's it, you know, sometimes things happen, you know, whatever you hit traffic or you forget to do thing, things, you know, we all make mistakes, but integrity of a person, it says a lot. And the trust factor, if they're going to be reliable for the next four or five years in the college, right? So if a coach says, hey, Mike, get me this video by Saturday, Saturday comes along, where the heck's the video? You never sent it. Sunday comes along, the coach says, hey, Mike, what happened? I was waiting for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I got tied up. I had stuff to do. Or, hey, Landon, send me your stats. I need your videos. I need this. I need this information. You're posting all day long on Snapchat and Twitter and Instagram, but you can't get me your video. So those things are no good. We see these things as coaches. And if you're not following through, you go from priority on our list to, okay, I'll get around to him when I can, right? So if you want to be top of mind, top priority and helping, getting uh, getting the help from a college coach. So whether you go to kicking world camps with me, uh, our coaches, Coach Jesse and stuff, or you go to XYZ or ABC kicking camp, if you want to find favor with them and get at the top of the list, top of mind, make sure you're doing what they ask and what we ask of you, right? So if you're out there and you're just sort of just blowing it off, I mean, you're not going to get my help. I'm going to help someone else that actually picks up the phone. Hey, Ernesto, call me at 840. He calls me at 839. That's that's someone I'm going to help out, right? All right. So understand the percentages 
and metrics, okay? Some things that you guys need to know is the reality of how many people go from high school to college. I want you to think for a second. I'm going to tell the answer, but before I say it, how many kids out of 100, if you just took football in general, all the schools, 100 kids, 100 random kids, how many of those do you think would play college football? I didn't turn the comments on to try to avoid spam because I don't want to filter it, but just say it out loud or type it or whatever. Okay, so the answer is 6%. So one in 16 specialists play college football from high school. Okay, think about that. One in 16, okay, that's not many. So the top 6% go on to play football, okay? Now, in college, okay, to be in the top, to be in the FBS or Division One, you actually need to be in the top 1% to 2%, which would be out of 50 people at a camp, okay, at a regular camp, a kicking world camp, a bigger one, like our Texas or New Jersey camp, uh, you'd be needing to be like the top 3 or 4 out of 50 kids, okay? If you went to our showcase event, I would say it's more like the top 20%. So this year we had 60 at our uh, invite-only showcase we do every year. Um, you would probably need to be in the top probably, I don't know, 15, 15 from that event to go to college, okay? So the numbers are pretty pretty staggering. It's scary, but it's reality, right? If you don't have the right ability, you can't expect just to go out and play college football. So if you're going to camps across the country, kicking world camps, we have them all over the place. We do about 50 in, I think it's 24 states this year. But um, you really need to be setting a goal of, okay, if I go to a camp of 30 kids, I want to be the top five or the top four, top three, if you want to play at the Division One, Division Two level. <clears throat> Division Three, you probably still got to be in the top six of a camp of 30 to even think about them. All right. Now, I posted a really useful chart we had at our showcase event. I posted it on the screen there. But if you go back a few days, uh, today is January, what's today, the 13th. If you go back, I think it was like around the 9th or 8th, January 8th, 2018, I posted like a dark gray chart with some white and blue numbers. Look at that screenshot. It save it on your phone. It tells you where you need to be for Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One to come from high school to get a chance to play in college. Now, if you're um, in high school, there's another metric there to be a high school varsity starter. That would be sort of an average level starter, okay? So take a look at that chart. That should help you a lot. Last couple of things we're going to talk about, and we're going to wrap it up. It's almost 40 minutes here, so I hope it helped you. But a couple references and then some things that we do that you could look forward to if you train with us that help get your name out there and recruiting. So a good reference is kickingworld.com slash recruiting. So go to kickingworld.com <clears throat> near the top right. There's top middle. There's tabs about camps, lessons, recruiting, shop. Click recruiting. <clears throat> and on that page, there's like three or four links on that page. Read the whole page, but then go under the um, how to make a football kicking highlight video, how to decide which college football camps to attend how to decide which kicking camps are good for you, and then just general tips. That'll help you. Now, on the top top of our site, or if we ever change our site, you know, in the next year or so, if you're watching this later, somewhere on our site, look for virtual training or, uh, excuse me, subscriptions or um, monthly subscription or monthly training, something like that. Uh, we'll, we'll probably change it at some point in the future. But virtual training is a good way to get with me. If you feel like you got any advice from this, some things that I do is I go on FaceTime with students. Uh, you could pay monthly. It's it's only $99. I'll do a virtual uh, lesson with you. So you could send me footage. We'll review it together. I'll send it back to you with some drawings on the screen, annotations, uh, explaining it verbally what's going on, as well as you could, you could shoot me a 
Snapchat, a Instagram, a, a Twitter, a text, whatever, an email, a phone call, a FaceTime, and we could talk. You could be out on a football field. Your dad could hold the FaceTime and just show me, hey, Coach Brent, you got quick two minutes? Yeah, we could schedule it, or I could just on the fly if I'm available, I'll take a quick look at it. Okay, you know, here's what you got to do. Do this, make this adjustment. I, I got to go have a good day. And stuff like that. We do that, and then once once a month, there's more of a formal review where we sit down for 10 minutes and, and video. Um, analyze your video so it's only 99 dollars a month it's unbelievable the price is probably going to change in the future but if you lock it in now you'll be you'll be in on that plan so take a look at that but um what do we do at kicking world so if you if you come to our camps what do we do to help get your name out there a couple things um <clears throat> other than teaching you the proper fundamentals and technique and really helping you dial in your process, which I, I truly believe is the most important thing, fundamentals and technique. You look at the best golfers out there, uh, the best kickers. One thing that they all have in common is they do it the same way every time. One thing that makes a, a difference between a decent high school kicker to a, a awesome college kicker, like look at that guy, Rodrigo Blankenship for Georgia. I never had the pleasure of coaching him. I hope he comes to our college camp this year in Texas, but he was awesome. Lights out kicker, monster kickoffs, awesome clutch kicks, 55, 51 yards through through playoffs this year. He really helped their team get into the finals. Um, but one thing he did was he, he followed his process every way. He had sort of a quirky way of setting up. It was strange, but he did it exactly the same every way. And that's what you have to do. So before you even think about getting your name out there, sending emails, okay, well, I got to go to this camp to get exposure. I got to get recruiting. I, get, I need to you know do this. Lock in your fundamentals and your technique before you even think about that. Because if you're not fundamentally sound, no coach is going to care how many camps you go to. No college coach is going to care who you know or what coach recommends you. If he watches your video and after the first three kicks, it's like, are you kidding me? Like, why did you send this to me? You're pretty much off the recruiting radar with that school. So get your fundamentals dialed in first. Now, we help with that, of course. That's our MO. That's what we do at Kicking World. That's our number one thing. We teach fundamentals, technique, and how to get better. We're, we're known more than any other camp for that. Sometimes it's uh, misconstrued that that's all we do. That's definitely not all we do. We do recruiting as well. So what do we do to get your name out there? Um, we have our hot prospect list, okay? That's the, the biggest thing. That's like striking gold if you get on that. So there, if you go to kickingworld.com recruiting on the drop down, click the hot prospect list. Just read through the FAQs. I'm not going to get into detail, but basically if you make that, it's like me vouching for you and I'm going to bat for you. And some some coaches out there in, in camps, they're so big that they're afraid to sort of help kids individually because they don't want it to get around like, okay, well, I showed favoritism. Ours is a little different. While we do see a lot of kids, it's not favoritism, but if you make that hot prospect list, they're sort of pulled out and it's a different level. And we go all in on those kids and individually help them and coach them and send out emails for them and teach them. Now we do help other, all of our kids that come to our program, but they get an extra recruiting boost because they've showed their ability over X camps or private lessons, their attitude, their level, their consistency, their fundamentals, their pressure, their ball flight, their foot to ball contact. So that's why we help them even more, right? It's not to say that if you don't make the hot pros prospect list, your chopped liver will of course help you. It's just that they get extra. Now, another thing that we added in recently is on the cusp list. So I'd like to say that our hot prospect list is our like top one to three, four percent of our kickers, one to five percent of our kickers. Um, and then our on the cusp, cusp list is about our five, six percent to like nine percent of our kickers. So you got to be better than the top 10 percent. So for every camp you attend, if you're in the top nine, nine out of 10, you'll have a chance to, uh, or I'm sorry, you know, top one or one or two out of 10, you, you might have a chance to uh, get looked at for the hot prospect list or the uh, on the cusp list. Another thing is we record stats at all our camps, our one day camps as of this year and the last you know 11 years of doing this, we do field goal charting only. We do teach potting and kickoffs, but we only post the field goals just because there's not enough time in a one day camp to do all these. It's more of a learning environment. 
the two-day camps, it's over two days. So we do field goals, kickoffs, and punts. We chart those. Uh, so those stats are available on the website when coaches search for your name. One thing that we don't do is we don't make it cryptic. A lot of camps are afraid, like, people are going to go and steal their clients or poach. And unfortunately, people do it to us. But I feel like it's more valuable to you as a student to write your first name, last name, school, city, state. Yeah, there's bad camps that are going to go and grab that and then start sending you mailers and make it like you're officially invited to their camp and they found out about you from us that you did good and it stinks but at least your name is getting out there that's my main concern so other camps will just put your last name or they put like first initial last name and keep it cryptic just with your two letter letter state abbreviation we actually put your school name and everything because i feel like if a coach is searching for you it's going to help you to get found and um it's just that's how we do things and then the other thing is uh if you're doing really well at our camps you could earn an invite to our hot arts our showcase event so through 2018 we have an annual invite showcase every year it's typically like i'd say the top 10 to 15 percent of kids that come through our camps um this year we only invited uh about I think it was about 80 or 90. It was really exclusive. I think it was like the top 8%. So we really honed it in this year. But we had, of the 80 or so kids we invited, uh, 60 came out. So it was very exclusive. It was a great outing. And if you look at the the blog or offers from kids that went to that showcase and then another three earlier uh, in, uh, in December. So I think there's seven offers from 60 kids that went to that camp, seven offers on the table uh, to five different kids. So two kids. Uh, got two offers and then the other five were unique kids so it's pretty interesting you know a lot of different people get picked up from that showcase event and it sort of validates who you are and that you can perform with pressure and coaches they watch it live so it's really useful so to finish off uh 45 minutes here that was my goal 30 to 45 minutes we went a little longer but hopefully it helped you uh next steps sign up for a kicking world camp go to kickingworld.com um do a private lesson with us. We have camps all over the place. Make sure you follow our Twitter page. It's at Kicking World. Post a lot of recruiting information, news, and our Instagram page. Instagram and Twitter are two most popular ones. Uh, we have quite a few followers on each of those platforms. So it's Kicking World, all one word. Uh, give Kick Tracker a follow too. That's our app uh, that I developed about five years ago. It's called Kick Tracker instagram twitter and facebook and download it for ios and uh google play uh and uh kickingworld.com is our website and then for the a lot of the parents uh coaches they do facebook i know a lot of kids don't do facebook so much these days but facebook.com slash kicking world and of course you're on our youtube so if you don't already subscribe to our channel make sure you subscribe uh, if you have any other questions i would advise signing up for a virtual lesson uh, or signing up for that subscri subscription plan or AKA virtual uh, training that I mentioned. And that's all available on our website. You can find out about that. Otherwise camp or lesson or buy our kicking DVD, punting DVD, or my book, which is all available on Amazon. Search uh, Coach Brent Grablechoff book or complete guide to kicking or step-by-step -step guide to punting or kickingworld.com slash shop. So take a look at our camp schedule. We just posted all of our 18 schedule a couple weeks ago. We got a lot of camps this year and uh, we look forward to seeing you and thanks for watching and I hope it helped you. And uh, me, Coach Jesse, Co all the rest of the coaches, we look forward to seeing you at a camp or private lesson soon. Take care.